it was just, it was devastating for the whole family because we really honestly had no idea if we were going to find her alive. And Ooh, I need to be. Welcome back to Mom Nation from the Heart. And now a word from our sponsor. Hello, everyone. This is Ryan Gilliam, Senior Mortgage Banker with Waterstone Mortgage. If you're looking to buy a new home or even refinance a current one, I'm able to help you find the best program and interest rate that fits your specific needs. You could call me anytime directly at phone number 480-635-3035. Three, five, if you have any mortgage questions or if you're ready to get pre-approved for a new home purchase. Thank you. Hey, everybody. We are back with another episode of From the Heart, where we share inspirational stories, useful information, and we discuss a variety of women-related topics. I'm Katie, the founder of Mom Nation, and I would love to, I'm so excited to, welcome our awesome guest, Jenny. She is Hi, Jenny. Welcome. <laughs> so good to have you on. She, Jenny and I met, I don't know, I think last year sometime. She is our amazing locksmith babe. So Jenny and her husband own American Lock and Key. American Patriot Lock and Key. There you Sorry. go. <laughs> I knew American was in there. Um, and, and we just love her. So thank you so much for being on with us today. We are not talking about locks today though, Jenny, are we? No, we're not. Uh, but next time, maybe. Yeah. Well, you could probably talk about locks all day long. Like what kinds of locks you should get to keep your home secure. I, when I just, I digress for a minute, guys, sorry, we'll get back on the topic. But when I learned from you that there are certain, I think you had told me it was lock sets or deadbolts that actually need to get more secure, like bigger bolts in your doorways, yeah. you know, I'm, so I know I'm not explaining it right. No, you're good. You're doing a good job. That really good. blew my mind. Cause I was like, Oh, so the doors, the, what the doors normally come with, like, that's not good enough. And apparently it's not. No. Oh, you're talking about security strikes. Yeah. What helps keep the deadbolts in the door so people can't kick it, kick it in. Yeah. So, but, um, maybe we'll do a live and learn with that. We should, we should, because I think that, uh, you know, security and safety is definitely on the minds and hearts of everybody, especially in these times. And yes. um, I think that that would be a great, great little learning session for our mamas. But that's not what we're talking about today. Again, though, with the safety and security, I mean, that kind of yes. was a great segue into today's topic, right? Yes, very so, much so. Go ahead. So we are talking about missing persons um, and what to do if, knock on wood. Hopefully none of you ever have to deal with that. But if something happens and one of your family members goes missing, what steps should you take at that point? And Jenny, I would love for you to just start with your story. Kind of tell us a little bit, give us a little bit of background. What happened to you? It was what, like five or six months ago? Yeah, it was back in October. So I am very blessed. I live with my husband's parents. And at that time, we were also living with my sister-in-law and she is mentally ill. And um, she decided one day that she was upset and that she was gonna leave. And um, it was in the middle of the night, all of us were sleeping and she did, she just left. And we woke up the next day and she was missing and it was absolutely terrifying. And my husband and I just put everything on hold. We, the family just stopped and we looked for Megan and it was eye-opening on how much I didn't know on how to find somebody. I mean, I had not that they're the same, but I mean, I misplaced, my dog had gotten out and I knew to put signs up, but you can't always do that for a person. Right. So, um, there was a lot of things that were, you know, we, we learned quickly, you know, where to go and what we had to do to find her. And we looked, it, it was a lot. So, so but, um, go ahead. let me back you up. Okay. Did you ever, and this may come later in the story, uh -huh. but did you ever get to the bottom of, and if this is personal, just tell me about why she left. You said that she was upset, but did you ever get to the bottom of like, why did she think that was the solution? So, um, 
So Megan lives in um, a world where she thinks that it's a video game. Um, some kind of mix of like Sims and Fable and um, just all of that mixed up. So she doesn't really have a great concept of what actual reality is. Mm -hmm. So she got upset because she'd already smoked all her cigarettes that night and she had been stashing money um, that she found around the house and decided she was going to go walk up to the Circle K near our home. And then at that point, she got in somebody's, um, we think she got into a vehicle and then ended up on a bus. And yeah, so I mean, she just doesn't understand what's going on. Okay, I got you. But at the time, you didn't know she was going to Circle K. So no, we had no idea where she went. So you woke up, Megan mm -hmm. was gone. Yes. Then what? So um, we... We started looking everywhere. Uh, we, we ran to our neighbors asking if they had seen anybody. Um, and there was a house just down the street that we knew had some security cameras. So we ran over there, Sean talked to them and um, found out that, you know, it's like, hey, can you look and see if you saw her? So we have a time frame of when she left because we didn't even know how long she'd been gone. Right. We thought it had just been a couple hours. Well, actually, turns out it had been quite some time. I think she left around like 150. And then, so we got a direction from them. And this was at like, oh, I mean, it was it was later in the morning. I think we had just gotten home from church. Oh, wow. And so it was probably about 11. So she'd been gone for quite some time, but we didn't realize that because we thought she was sleeping. And we want to be respectful to her space. And if she was sleeping, we just let her sleep. Right. Because she struggled with that. So um, we ran to Circle K because that was just the next place to look. And she had been there. She was very well known there. So making sure, you know, go where they, they know her. Right. And um, they were able to find her on some security footage. And then at that point, everything just kind of stopped because we couldn't find her anywhere else. Nobody, no other security footage in the area had her, nothing. So it was really scary. So my husband, Sean, found a company called the Find Me Group. And we spoke with a gentleman named Kelly. And um, the, it was the next day that that happened. Because, I mean, we, we, we put up signs and everything else. But this gentleman was wonderful. He came out. He was a retired police officer and special. Uh, I, I believe he's in the military as well. He got a search dog out there. They searched for her. They found her sent there and everything. And, but that's where everything stopped. So, so what was your first initial reaction to call the police? I mean, did you talk to the police? Oh, no. oh sorry. I forgot. We, we called the police immediately because Megan is considered a person, um, basically like a disabled person, um, uh, because she doesn't know, like I said, reality. And so we called them immediately and um, cause she had gone for walks before and we found her right away. But anytime that she had, you know, decided to leave, we always have to call the police because that is our first um, spot to go to. Cause they're that way they're out, they're looking and things like that. And so we called the police, they started looking for her. Um, we had to get them updated. We got them a picture. Um, unfortunately, we don't have we didn't have a ton of um, updated photos. Everything we had was from four years ago um, mm -hmm. at that time because or three or four years ago because Megan doesn't like having her picture taken. Oh. And I wouldn't like having my picture taken against my will. So we have to be respectful. It's her. It's 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 a person. And so, you know, we had to find pictures and the Chandler police were absolutely wonderful um they they took all the information and um we also let uh because we lived really close to the um Gila River Reservation uh like we we're literally a mile away from them uh we also let them know at the same time and uh Pinal County Sheriff's and then um let them know and then I started posting all over Facebook. I mean, Mom Nation, every group I can imagine just kind of plastering her image, missing, please help us look, all this stuff. So, I mean, she was absolutely everywhere, which 
we felt kind of awkward about because we're like, she doesn't like her picture taken. And these were not always the best, but that's what we had. Right. So. And you had to do something. I mean, you know, you, you, you had to use your resources and uh, I, um, we got it all, you know, every, people were, you know, looking for her. I mean, people were on their bikes. Um, I, I think Lydia was out, uh, my friend of mine, Lydia was out looking for her on her bikes. I mean, we had everybody in the area from South Chandler to Phoenix. I mean, Mesa, people were looking for her. It was insane. Um, we basically printed out flyers and that had all of her information, her name, her date of birth, um, what she looked like, the most accurate picture we had and everything on it and then gave it to all the different business owners and they all put them up for us so that way anybody in our area if they had seen her would be able to say oh and then we just said if you see her call the cops don't confront her don't don't do anything just call the police officers and they'll come and take care of her for you and if i remember right there were like you said so many people that had s- sort of come to help you, whether that be in other areas of the city or whether that be online. I know you got a really good group from Mom Nation that jumped right on it, supported you guys, helped you guys out a bunch. Um, So, you know, it was good. I think probably for you that you are so well networked and you're so well connected. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, Mom Nation was, I mean, you guys, you guys were really the first ones I posted on because you're so big and there are so many people that I know on there that um, I knew would help and spread it. And then, I mean, just absolutely everybody shared more than I ever would have imagined um, really just stepped up and were like, Hey, we're keeping an eye out for her. And it was, I mean, I had other groups that I posted in um, that were helpful as well. I mean, literally we just got, ev- I, 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 I blanketed the Valley with her picture. Cause we had no idea if she got into a vehicle with somebody, um, which is what we think she did, um, because the buses don't come down that far on Gilbert. Mm-hmm. They stop it um, just a little south of Germain. So in order for her to get from where she was to uh, where we ended up finding her in Tempe, um, there had to have been some other form of transportation. So it was kind of, it, w- it was it was crazy. <laughs> what a scary time for you and your family, especially, especially to just stumble upon that, to think she's sleeping. And then all of a sudden to figure out, uh, no, she's gone. It was very scary. Um, I have, I have a four and a two-year-old and they love their aunt Megan. And, um, they kept asking me, you know, is Aunt Megan coming home? And I'm trying to be honest. And I said, we're working on it. We hope we're going to find her. We're praying for it try not to, you know, lie to my kids. Yeah. Um, You know, I didn't want to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to find her. It's not a problem. And then, you know, not happen. Yeah. So, um, but no, I mean that, and then my mother-in-law, God bless her soul. Um, she, she's Megan's, you know, it's her daughter and her guardian and everything else. And it was just, it was devastating for the whole family because we really honestly had no idea if, we were going to find her alive. And I mean, it took three days to find her How and I mean, sleep. Oh. and she, uh, and we, I mean, we ended up getting on the news because of, of, of people sharing and everybody helping us out. My mother-in-law, she, her name's Shelly. She, um, she actually got on the news so that way people could start looking for her. And um, it was, Oh, sorry. It it was a very rough time. And then, I mean, the after effects, I still feel like we're dealing with now because uh, River, my oldest, is still nervous about people leaving the home. Mm. And she's like, are you coming back? Are you going to come back? And I said, yes, honey, as long as I have control over it, I will come back. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just, it was very challenging on all fronts. My two-year-old was kind of like, eh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah just not quite didn't yeah. maybe quite understand yet the, the tension but it definitely really affected Riv it was I, like I said I still feel like she's trying to get over the um the abandonment you know she's like is everybody gonna leave too and not tell me or you know that kind of thing so yeah so scary and I'm sure you know all of you sort of processed it a bit different 
Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that a bit. Um, take me through the emotions of, of all of you. Take me through what you guys did to cope and what you would suggest to other people now that you've been through it. If they happen to, again, knock on wood, hope it never happens to anybody uh, ever. Um, but the world we live in, we know that it may. So what would you suggest to others that might deal with the same thing? So I think the best thing is, is do as much as you physically can call the police, get the flyers out, do what you can, but at the same time, make sure you're still taking care of yourself. Cause that was something that was really hard. I had to, you know, make sure that everybody was eating and, you know, the world doesn't stop just because you're going through a difficult time and that's hard. You know, you think it, your bot, your brain saying, no, everything should just be ended. I, ah, you know, and it doesn't. And, um, we were blessed enough that having our own business, we were able to kind of put things on hold for a few minutes or a few days and things like that and have those resources where we didn't have to call into work and say, Hey, I can't make it in today. Yeah. But I mean, the stress, the the biggest thing you can do is do what as much as you can and then take a big breath and step back. And it's really hard to step back, but you have to, because otherwise you're just going to run yourself into the ground. Um, It was really hard for Shelly because like I said, that's her daughter and that's, she would have nightmares about this, that Megan would just go disappearing and they'd never, we'd never find her again until, you know, they found her body or something. And we were so thankful that that did not happen. Yeah. But, um, (laughs) sorry, but no, it, um, it was very stressful. Um, We just try to keep life as much as normal as we could, especially for the girls. Yeah. Um, Because they didn't understand and everything else. And then um, I think it really took a big toll on Shelly's health as well. That because she got pretty sick after that. But so making, like I said, making sure you're taking care of yourself. Don't, you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, take a breath, go outside, enjoy the sun, enjoy your family. And, you know, take, like, take, take a little bit of time and then get back to it, you know, call, you know, follow up on anything that's come up and make sure, you know, but do that. But really taking care of yourself is just vital. I totally agree with that. And I would be willing to bet you tell me if I'm right or wrong, but I'd be willing to bet because I know who you are. Probably people came out of the woodwork wanting to help you. I mean, I know that we had people all over the Valley that were looking for her, but did you get people that were offering to help you maybe bring you guys meals and things like that? Uh, We had family members that were offering and some of our friends and stuff. And we, we just really wanted, um, we didn't want, we didn't want to, and we appreciated the offers and everything else. And it's a wonderful thing to do, but don't be, uh, offended if you know your friends of somebody that that's going through that at that point if they say no because we just really wanted to just kind of we kind of like closed in and focused on finding Megan keeping the kids normal and everything else I'm not saying we ate the best meals that that week but um but no I mean a lot of people offered help and everything else but mostly I mean just the prayers and, you know, hey, we're riding around your neighborhood or one of our one of the ladies that lived in the area, her she um, sent out uh, notices to her ward because she's um, a Mormon. Mm-hmm. And that was absolutely wonderful. And that really got it to a large area that is centralized to where we lived. And then um, they sent it out to other wards in where we live because they're very um, centralized, you know, each ward covers a specific geographical place. Right. So um, if somebody goes missing, that's a really great resource. If you can find, or if you have a friend that's, that's of that faith, or you can go to one of their church houses and they will, they're wonderful and they'll help you and they'll pray with you. And um, for the life of me, I cannot remember her name, but she was absolutely just the sweetest thing. And she just stopped me and my husband, because we were walking around trying to see, you know, maybe, if she'd fallen because and where we where we lived at that time we've moved since um there was a lot of these like washes that had areas where if you fell it'd be really hard to get out so we were walking around and looking in that area and we we stopped her and you know she she just prayed with us and it was very calming and wonderful for her to help us in just that simple way so i mean sometimes just a prayer but reaching out to people of 
of either your church or of the Mormon church was absolutely a key item for us. And I like what you said back about the, hey, you know, people were offering to bring us meals, but we were politely declining. I like what you said there about, you know, being a giving person, um, it, not that I would have taken offense if I would have offered you a meal and you said, no, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have been offended because I would have understood, but some people don't. And, you know, some people may take offense to that. So I think it's important for people who are wanting to help somebody in this situation to understand that it's a very stressful situation. And some people deal with things differently and they yeah. may deal with it more inwardly. I mean, how many, you know, we don't think about it. I think when we're wanting to be helpful to people, but how bombarded were you with people that were just wanting the story that wanted to know, well, what happened? And you can only tell it so many darn times, like until you yourself go crazy. And that removes your focus from what you need to do in terms of getting her back. Yeah. So, I mean, ev so imagine every single store from Gilbert and Riggs all the way up to um, I, I think I hit every store between Gilbert and Riggs and Gilbert and oh, Ocotillo, every store. So in every single store, I had to go in and say the exact same thing. And it was absolutely mind numbing, but it was what I needed to do. I had to get these out. If I just handed somebody a paper, they're not going to understand no. that this is somebody that desperately needs help. And, you know, she unfortunately at that time looked homeless mm. um, just because of her mental illness. We took very great care of her, but you can't force somebody to take care of themselves. She's, oh, let's see. I think she's 32, 31, 32 now. And I can't, I, I, I can't force somebody that's my size in a shower. Yeah. I can't do that. And it's. You, and again, you gotta them. Well, I was just going to say, and again, you know, you've mentioned that a couple of times during this episode is she's a person and yeah. she may have her, her things that are going on, but we have to respect the fact that she's an adult. Yeah. I, you she know? may not understand what reality is, but she is an adult and which, which is hard because, because she's an adult, but an adult with mental illness, there's a fine line that the police have to walk mm. because she's an adult. So technically she could just do whatever she wants. Do what she wants. But yeah. because he doesn't understand reality. I mean, I, I told the police officer, um, it's like, Hey, Megan at times cannot understand what reality is. She could decide she can walk on water and go try to walk on the lake. Yeah. Is it probably going to happen? No, but it could. Because she has no concept, literally no concept on a bad day of anything. She thinks that you and I are um, avatars and that this is all a video game and that she owns homes all over the valley and that she gets money from repetitive actions like walking or smoking or just doing things. So it's it, you can't argue with it. You can just do the best you can. And then when they go missing, you just got to try and find them. So. So that, that brings me to another question because she's an adult and because as adults, we can do what we want. How did that conversation go with the police when you first called them? Was there a certain amount of time that you needed to wait for her to no. be missing or like, how did no. that conversation go? So because she has severe mental illness, because she doesn't have that concept of reality, we call immediately or um, that can reflect poorly on us. Not that we care about that. Mm -hmm. uh, but at that point, it's, like I said, it's a fine line. And um, it was it was challenging because they're like, well, she can go what she wants. But if she doesn't really understand uh, what's going on, and we had to work with a few different police officers until they really understood. And we had to tell all of her different diagnoses, which I don't really want to get into right now. Yeah, of course. Uh, but... Uh, finally, we were able after, to, um, I think on the third day, it was either the end of the second day or the beginning of the very third day, we were finally able to get them to do the silver alert. So that way that people knew, hey, if you see this person, um, we need to, you know, get 
we need to call the police. And then that was also when the, the, the news station was finally able to get to go ahead and get her story out there. And then um, we were so lucky we found her on the third day. It was just, it, she was pretty rough on that at, by that time. So t- tell us that story. So you're doing all so, this, you're on the news, everybody's frantic. It's been mm-hmm. days now. Yeah. And we don't know where she's at, if she's eating, if she's warm. Well, was it, it was warm then. And no meds. No, it was, it was the very no beginning meds. of October. And no meds. Was it five days or three days? Oh, sorry. And <laughs> she a, needs them and, daily. She has medication that she has to take twice a day that help her maintain something of um, a normal life. Mm-hmm. And so she was without her meds. And then finally, um, we get a call from the police and we thought it was, we found Megan. Not, yeah, that was exactly it. And um, what had happened was somehow she ended up in Tempe over on University in McClintock. And she had been there for a few days. And pretty much the whole time she was gone, she had been up there. Um, there's unfortunately a large population of homeless in the area. And she kept going back to the Circle K trying to get cigarettes, but she was out of money. And because she looked unkept, um, they're like, hey, you, you, you can't stay here, honey. You, you got to go. And finally, um, they called the police. The Circle K people did. And the police came by and they're like, oh, you're missing somebody's looking for you. Oh. And then they, um, they called, uh, my mom, my mother-in-law and, uh, we, we literally like, she dropped to the ground. She was so thankful that Megan was alive and we got clean clothes and I stayed home with the girls and Shelly and my husband went to go get her. And, um, we just, You know, it was, and then I called the news station to let them know and they raced over. So that way they could get the ending piece to that, you know, missing and oh wait, she's found. Right. um, But Megan was in a really rough, rough state because like I said, she didn't, she, she doesn't take care of herself and yeah. So she ended up going to the hospital and she was in remarkably good condition other than her feet were really bad. And, um, but the great thing is, is because this happened, Megan is now in, um, a, a, a home with other people of other people that have mental illness mm-hmm. and she's thriving. She's doing so well and she's, they're working on getting her tools for independence and things like that. So the main goal is to get her to a point where maybe one day she can, you know, have just a roommate have her own place Mm -hmm. um we don't know if that'll happen but we're hopeful but I mean if that hadn't happened there's no way we ever would have found we they would have ever got her to a point where she could be where she's at now so it's it's kind of it it was never good that it happened but good things came from it yeah yeah and what a great way of looking at it because I mean we can Every situation has two sides to the stick, right? We can look at the negative side of it and we can dwell on that. Or we can say, hey, you know what? It sucked while it was going on. It sucked while it happened. But here's the positivity that came out of it. And I love that you went in that direction because you can spiral pretty quickly, I'm sure, in emotions and anger and sadness when something like that happens to your family. I mean, incredible I can't even imagine how that impacted you for those days all of that happened multiple times a day um just why what the heck's going on why am I dealing with this I have so many other things to do I have my kids I have my business I have my marriage and my own personal life I have all these things going on and I have to literally drop as much of it as I can as I physically possible to find somebody that isn't going to say thank you Mm. or remember or you know be nice to me in a few days after she comes home or anything like that but it's the right thing to do and she's family and you have to take care of your family and I, I I can sit there and you know be frustrated about it or I can you know go hey you know because of that happened we we were able to finally get her through the system which is 
rough for mental illness for them to understand, hey, she needs more help. What yeah. we're, we're doing the best we can, but she needs more help. And because we can't stay up 24 seven, it's not physically possible. No. And I don't, you know, I don't want to live in a, in a house that's completely locked down. And that's what we would have had to do is completely lock absolutely everything down. And it, it just, it wasn't going to work. So it just, it really helped us get her to a point where she's at now. Was she glad to be found? She was, she was really happy to be found. She said she missed her mom. She missed the house and she just wanted to, you know, go home to where she knew where she was. Um, But she, you know, she, she, she couldn't tell us really. She said she got on a bus, mm. but we don't know how she got to a bus stop or how, you know, she could get a bus pass or anything. I mean, this is during, you, you still have to wear a mask. She had no mask. Oh. Like I said, I had no idea when, like how she ended up in Tempe. I really think she got in somebody's car, yeah. and, a, a vehicle. And um, they were like, hey, you know, hey let's do this and she's like sure she's like a teenager like permanently stuck at 16 Mm -hmm. and And rough um, age (laughs) yeah and you know if somebody offered her cigarettes or booze she would have surely gone with them Mm -hmm. and we uh but yeah I think I think she got in the car with somebody and then all of a sudden they're like I get out Mm. left her somewhere thankfully I mean because who knows what could have happened I'm thankful that nothing happened to her or anything like that. But I'm like, I can't imagine um, just jumping in a car with somebody Yeah. Like to me. But, you know, my very different brains, very different brains. Her brain works separately than my brain. And it, it's, it's hard to remember that sometimes. But yeah. that was our biggest fear was that somebody, you know, took her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you never heard from anyone. Nobody tried to contact her or anything like that. So there there's, it's just really a whole lot of unknown over that couple of days. Yeah, we have absolutely no idea. But the thing is, is that she was in Tempe a majority of the time that she was gone. She was there because that's what the the Circle K uh, employees told us. Oh no, she's been here for days. Uh, So in order for her to get up there, um, her brother, my husband used to own a, um, a magic the gathering card store up there and she used to have friends that kind of lived in the area so we I don't know if that's why she went up there or that's just where she got left or I don't know well thankfully she's home and thankfully she's got the help that she needs I mean thank goodness for her and thank goodness for your family all involved very positive thing that came out of something that was oh so scary I'm sure yeah Um, Let me take you back to the gentleman that got the search dogs out. Yes. Tell me a little bit more about that sort of community or that group. Um, And Mm -hmm. are they only here in Arizona or are they across the country? Like what's, what's up with them? So um, I, the guy's name is Kelly and he's with the find me group and they are on Facebook and he is absolutely amazing. He is um, like I said, he's retired uh, I believe a retired police officer and also um, a military. So uh, very nice man, but that's what he does. And I do believe he's only in Arizona, but if he is missing, uh, if you, if you do have somebody that's missing, he has great resources all over the country. So he's, he's a great place to start for anybody. Um, but Sean found him uh, just through Google search. Um, you know, how do I find somebody that's missing? And he found, and that popped up. So we called him. He lives, he lived like less than a mile away from where we were. Wow. I mean, it was insane. Like he was, he was over in like 20 minutes after I called him and he said, okay, well, let's get a search dog out. And, um, cause she went missing like Sunday morning that and then that was Monday morning when we got him and he got a search dog out within two hours and because the search dog lived in the West Valley so they drove over with the dog they got her sent and they followed it from our house to the Circle K to a parking spot and that's where it stopped so we knew she got in a vehicle or something because there was no other route where the dog found her and then um they also work with um like 
non-traditional ways of finding people. So um, psychics and other people and um, as well as the search dogs in more traditional ways. Mm, that is amazing. And now are they privately funded? Is it donation that he works on? It, or? I, I believe it's donations. So I, I know we did, I, I know we did donate a little bit of money for, to him just to say thank you, but he doesn't ask for anything. He, this is just his passion. And then the people um, that work with him, I believe also donate their time and things like that. So, I mean, it's really a labor of love. And um, he told us, you know, if she ever goes missing again, or if you, you know, if, you know, just share our, share our, our mission, our message and things like that so that we can help as many people as possible. Yeah. He's yeah. very passionate about it. That's incredible. I mean, there's still some phenomenal people in this world. It's, it's really nice to, to hear that. So after all is said and done, and it's been months now, when you guys look back, when your family looks back and reflects, what have you learned through that? Um, one of the biggest things that I really took from it is, and I already did because I'm slightly obsessed with taking pictures of my, my, my kids, but making sure you have updated photos of everyone in your family. If not, like I, I try to do it once a week, like make sure I catch a picture of Sean. If something was to happen and he goes missing for whatever reason, uh, I have an update. I have a current photo and a picture of my mother-in-law and a picture of my father-in-law. And my girls, obviously, I try to get like every day because, you know, kids change so quick, so quick and adorable. And um, even myself trying to make sure that, you know, I have pictures of myself a few times a month. So that way, especially if I like dye my hair or do anything new. Um, so that way, my husband and my family has updated photos because that was the biggest challenge for us. All the photos that we had of Megan were really old. And they didn't reflect what she currently looked like. So, I mean, that was it. And just making sure that we, you know, spend time together as a family and enjoy each other. Because I don't know, Sean could go missing tomorrow, God forbid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, yeah. it's, or it, it's just time is precious. Yeah. Enjoy it while you have it. Absolutely. And that's the biggest thing, right? Is one day they're here and the next day they could be gone. And where your story had a happy ending, that's not everybody's story with a happy ending. So that's, you know, something that we hear a lot of and it like seems cliche sometimes, but it makes so much sense. And it really truly is the most important thing. Hold the ones you love close, right? Yes, very much so. And, you know, if you're struggling, you're not alone. And that was the other thing is like, I, I, I realized that when Megan went missing, that I had this huge network of friends that I don't even know that people that I, that I don't know personally that really care and are willing to stop whatever they're doing and just help. And that there's so many good, wonderful, caring people in this world that it's, it's, it's a scary time and it's a scary world, but there's really, really good people in it. And you just have, you know, just reach out and, you know, touch somebody touch somebody <laughs> what is that an old AT&T commercial I think I remember yeah. it way back when I'm a child of the 80s so I remember those commercials well Jenny it was such a pleasure thank you so much for your time thank you for sharing your story I know that it's probably still a tough thing to talk about because of all of the emotions surrounding that and everything that your family went through during that time um, mm -hmm. I also know safety and security is a huge big deal to you because it you is. are our locksmith mama so um, it just kind of it's just funny that this that we're having this story on the podcast it kind of goes hand in hand with what you do so it's kind of an interesting thing um, but mm -hmm. if, if somebody in the audience has a question, um, you know, maybe a more specific question than I had asked about, you know, what you did or what you went through during that time. Would, would you be open to people reaching out? Yeah, to anybody can message me. It's not a problem. Just message me on Facebook. And I'm always willing to chit chat with people. I never have a problem with it. And I'm always here to help. I definitely want to give back for, you know, whatever, everything that was given to me and the blessings that we have. So awesome. Here. And, and, and thank you. Thank you for that. No, that's, You're I welcome. so appreciate that. And that's what we do, right? I mean, you mm -hmm. got, you had a lot of people rally for you during that time and it's, it only makes sense to give back. So if somebody were to want to get in touch with you is the best way to do it through uh, American Patriot Lock and Key Facebook page. Yes, they can get me there. Not a problem. Um, or there's a phone number uh, on the, um, on our Facebook. Uh, they can text me there as well. And that goes straight to my cell phone. So Ah, beautiful. Say, hey, 
Um, I'm from Facebook. I have some questions concerning your live you did with Katie and I will definitely text you back. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. And for you guys out there in the audience, if you're interested in being a guest on the show, please follow us at mom nation USA. That's our handle at mom nation USA. And we're on the Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, all the popular ones, right? And uh, just, just give us a quick message. Shoot us a, a little love note. Let us know why you'd like to be on the show. While you are on your favorite podcast platform right now listening to this podcast, please do us a favor, subscribe, download, and rate us so that we can get this information out to the moms that need to hear it. Again, Jenny, it's been real. I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for having me. It was wonderful to be able to share. Uh, you're amazing. And I'm so, so glad that your family is intact and all is well. And it had a happy ending. Yep. Not everybody gets it, but we are blessed. That's true. All right. Bye. Bye.